Enjoy the show. Play on my channel. So, first off, I want to thank you for being on Tales of the Hunted. Because we've had... You're welcome. We've had a lot of different, uh, a lot of different nerds on here. We've had, you know... We've had film nerds. We've had music nerds. We've had um, comic nerds, especially, are prominent on here. A lot of indie comic artists. But we like to highlight everything indie on Tales of the Hunted. And okay. there's, there's no bigger of a need or an indie market than your market, sir, as Thank a you. professional photographer, because people need you. Events, especially like weddings, wrestling, where we met. Yep. At, uh, <clears throat> I believe the first time was AAW. Yep, um, it was a Lanko Star Wrestling. I think it was the sh it was uh, March to Glory. That yes. was the first show I met you at. That was that's when I, was, I met you, and then we worked the All for One show together. Mm. That was fun. And then <laughs> we'll get into that, but okay. <laughs> it was fun for me because Chris, yeah, yeah. Has, Chris has been trying to get me to come to these wrestling events. And it, it wasn't until I got paid. I'm sorry. Yeah. But, you know, once I got paid to be there, it's like, oh, my God. Because I, I, I knew I, it's, it's like podcasting or like why people stay away from golf. You know, you yeah. know, oh, do, 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 do. I'm going to that's a hole I'm going to fall into. And I'm, mm -hmm. I saw that, and now I'm falling in the hole. I, we had Tita La Crema on, <laughs> and it's just that that podcast. It was uh, Chris, Frank, and I, and Tita La Crema, and it it it, it was so fun, just yeah. playing into his persona. And we're gonna have uh, Devante's on. Uh, oh, he's a, for the one of the best event. One, yeah, one of the best guys I've out there man i met him a while back and he's such a nice guy um he's killing it down in virginia over at vcw he's killing it up here so he's getting his name out there so. and, and that's big dude i mean even just yeah i i didn't even know about the virginia stuff i just knew i i've seen i've seen him at these events like god this guy has a personality but yeah I, I'm, I'm just surprised oh, yeah. at especially even tony how he's been traveling around, just that kind of light bulb switching off of like, all right, they're at this event, but they also have like, like me, they have stuff scheduled out that, that is not necessarily directly related to what we do. Exactly. Um, like <clears throat> I met Tony at Atlantic All Star Wrestling as well, too. Um, I've worked with him in so many other companies like Super Crazy Pro Wrestling um, and just seeing him going down to like New York, going up to New York, going down to Delaware. Um, he's going out to Texas. He's going out to like wow. Illinois, out Ohio. So he's doing it the right way by getting his name out there and expanding his brand out there. Yeah. And that's, that's part of it is with the wrestlers, I see the dedication. And like I've said, a lot of times on this podcast, I, you can tell passion when you look at these guys, when I have yep. people on, even with you, I can tell when we're in those trenches ringside. I, I feel the tap. I know. Okay. Even like uh, the last event, uh, super crazy. We had, I, when I was recording and you're by me, I'm like, okay, he needs to get his shot. I need to get my shot. So where you go low, I go high. There's a naturally, uh, you know, a shake and bake there. I like to yes. put it when in the, in, whenever Chris and I go into the record videography for wrestling, it's shake and bake. He's got one end. I got the other. Just like you, you've got one end. I, you're letting me know the signs. So that passion comes through when you're in those trenches ringside, especially once we see the finished product that Chris puts out. Um, exactly. It's it's all that passion is showing, and that's why a lot more um, companies are coming to us. We actually just uh, confirmed O Dog for next week, um, nice. next Saturday. Big Brother and myself are going to be doing videography. Uh, for O Dog, so we're going full bore into this um, this wrestling production because everybody, it's like the indie comic circuit. Everybody mm -hmm. is so helpful and so nice. And hey, man, I like what you did here and supportive likes and comments and and shares and stuff. It's that is what makes this podcast a hub for all indie content creators exactly now i just want to dive into what you were saying about getting in the trenches like some people don't realize like you have to have a different mindset being at rinside 
compared to sitting at down there as a fan. Like you have to focus on. So I've been doing it for two years as a ringside photographer. Your mindset has to be changed from going to being that fan to being a professional. You have to watch the, what the wrestlers are doing because if you don't see them and they make a move, you might get smacked in the face. And I've been oh. that happened quite a few times. Couple times, dude. That cage, I got way too comfortable, and <laughs> I just because I'd see people like going to the ro- going to the ropes and just oh, there's a wrestler coming at me. During the last two events, I was like, I got close a couple times, and I was like, because I try to get in there, which everybody yeah. loves, but I'm looking at the camera, making sure I got a good shot, and then I'm like, oh, that body's getting closer. Uh oh. Mm-hmm. So there, you have to have a little bit of that knee jerk reaction when you're in those trenches because. You exactly. Don't, you don't want to have to put in a, a, a claim for short-term disability. <laughs> just... also, too, you, also, too, you just gotta keep mindful of the fans because the fans are paying to see that stuff. So, mm-hmm. like the ones that are sitting in the front row, you have to make sure you're not in their way. Like me, I'm like six foot one, so I have to go down low and mm-hmm. take pictures, or I have to go to the corner and hide a bit. Um, so that's another thing. And two, it's photographers and the videographers have to work together make sure we don't run into each other i've seen it at a different show up in connecticut where um a new photographer came out and he was just helping he was doing it and all of a sudden he bumped into the videographer and i can hear him collide mm. out the corner of my eye and i look over and i'm like you guys okay you're like yeah so it's it's you gotta be cool about it you also gotta talk to each other and know mm. what to do and yeah. like with the tap on the shoulder that's why i tell everybody i'm gonna tap you to shoulder when i'm coming by you or i'll come next to you so you know i'm there mm-hmm. because your eyes is focused on that little screen to do your job yeah and it's it's that kind of, that kind of communication that you need even without speaking just a tap mm-hmm. really helps everything flow better that that's what i found but so you've been doing the wrestling photography for 2 years what got you into wanting to do this because when I was in high school I took photography and Mm -hmm. you know it was fun you got to get out of class but you also got to really test out what makes this a good shot you know the rule of thirds and all all these principles you can learn but the actual implementation of it is what I I, it tickled my fancy I'll put it that way because photography everybody has a camera now but everybody Mm -hmm. still appreciates a photographer, a professional photographer will always have work. Hey, we have a photographer for this wedding. It's not, hey, um, Greg has a new iPhone and he's going to get all of the best shots. So this is a big, this is a long story. So let's go back a little further. Um, I've always been into art. You know, I've always liked the 2D art. Um, I've, I did vi- videography, video production in high school. Um, I've always messed around with, with the digital cameras because I just liked them as well, too. Um, fast forward a bit to about 2016. Um, I met my best friend, Frankie Picard, um, through his manager at the time because they were looking for a ride to one of the shows at CZW. And I said, hey, I'm, I'm working up in Bryn Mawr. I can come down to... I'm mean, sorry, Bally Kim, when I come down to you guys, pick you guys up and take you to the show. And, you know, his first met his when we first met, he was like, hi, my name is Frankie. I was like, hi, my name is Brian. And he's like, are you a worker? I was like, nah, I'm a fan. That's how I got into the wrestling business. I just started driving him around and it got to the point where he was like, hey, do you want to drive out to Pottstown for um, KCW? He's doing championship wrestling. I was like, sure, why not? And then in July, he was like, hey. You want to make that road trip out to Chicago for CCW versus Freelance Underground? I was like, hell yeah, let's do it. So we did a 24-hour road trip to and from Chicago and back. And I started a little bit of training over at CCW because I was getting with them and all that. I didn't, it didn't work out well. But they noticed I was very good with cameras, so I was working with videography. So I did a little bit of that. Um, I did a little bit of sound work. Um, and I guess... Fast forward now into the pandemic, I just got into photography because I was just using, I got a camera and all that. And so I did a little bit of shooting here and there. And at the time, I was doing the 2300 Wrestling Podcast with 
Dave Keener, which you know him yes, as Keener he's a referee. Awesome. I love him. He's a referee, and also he's you know now security and all that good fun stuff. Yes. Um, he comes up to me. He's like, "Hey, um, Block Target Wrestling up in Old Bridge, New Jersey, LTW needed a photographer. Do you want to come with? Do you want to drive up with me and you can help them out?" I was like, "Hell yeah!" Um, so that was back in March of 2022, and I got so scared because I didn't know what I was doing and just looking back from that, I was like, wow, there, I've changed so much. I've learned how to do all this. And that's how yeah. I really I got into the wrestling business and also doing ringside photography. And I started getting a few gigs around, the, around here. And then at one point, we got a call from our buddy Dennis Thies, who at the time was running Eastern Shore Pro Wrestling down in Chicopee, Virginia. Say, hey, do you guys want to come down and work for us? You know, Brian can do photography. You guys can do commentary. So you take a three-hour drive down the ticket seat, stay down there, do the show, come back up the next day. That's that's the, the – I don't I don't like travel, but mm-hmm. that is the, the fun part. Like um, I've said on this podcast before, my time's going down to the Blue Hen Comic Con, going down to Ocean City Comic Con, which I'm still planning on going with Frank this year. Um, it's I'm gonna try long, to go this year too. Yeah, it, it's a long drive, but it's it's so much fun because you know I'm at Blue Hen Comic Con sitting next to Ming Chen from Comic Ooh. Book Man, you know, and it, uh, and John Swayze. I'm like, oh shit, it, it, all for one, right there, you know. <clears throat> it, it's that is fun, but the experience of being down there, like I mentioned uh, before at Ocean City, how I had an old woman come up to me. She probably thought I was Frank Percy because he likes to wander. Um, and she just told me, she, thank you so much for, sh- for being here. And, you know, preci- uh, precipitation. Perci- <laughs> <laughs> Showing up is 80% of it. I'll put it. Yep. It's not precipitating. Not yet. Um, but sh- that's the big thing. Going to the event because it's uh it's very easy to just shut down a new idea or a new experience. Mm-hmm. Hey, do you want to go here? It's seeing that you know what this could be fun. There has to be that fun passion behind it, and yeah. that that's what I picked up because both of us had similar kind of uh, evolutions in that you know what I'm started off doing this but you know I really like doing this I really like doing it and then you lean into your passion mm-hmm. you know I it, editing it is one thing that I have learned that <laughs> recently apparently I'm pretty good at um I used to see it as a drag I d- just oh my god I, I have to edit I see it as now I get to edit especially after the long um gauntlet that I just went through with the Heroic Awards and getting them all the content. But being able to be creative in not necessarily an artistic way that people traditionally see. I'm not picking up a pen. I'm not picking up a paintbrush. You know, I'm not inking. I'm creating something that is still tangible like that in the podcast form, just like you. You're still creating something that is tangible, that people can latch onto and be a fan of. And yes. that's really what makes you a perjanger. Thank you. So I just want to drop. I don't want to drop this because it, it amazes people that in the two in the two and a half years, I have done almost now up to eighty to ninety shows. Mm-hmm. Um, twenty company, almost twenty companies. I am now head photographer for Atlantic All Star Wrestling in Woodbury, head photographer of Kaiju Pro Wrestling in Bristol, Connecticut, head photographer at United Wrestling Coalition in New Egypt, New Jersey. Photographer at Labor Love here in Philadelphia. Photographer for Wrestling Is Now in New York City. And photographer in Dynamite Championship Wrestling in Felton, Delaware. And I've already already been to um, Baltimore, Maryland, and Maryland, Delaware. New Jersey, Pennsylvania, New York, and Connecticut and Virginia. So like seven states in two years. Whew. And people are just like, how do you do it? I'm like, you got to do the, it because I love it. The country board behind you. And then you just yes. start filling them in, you know, as the states you go to. Because it's going to keep going, dude. 
So there is so there is one wrestler. Her name was Bill, her name is Billy Starks. Before she got signed to Ring of Honor, she actually had the map of the United States, and she put photos of every company she worked with in each of the states. Oh, that's awesome! That's and I was great. like, yeah, I should do that. Yeah, yeah. Oh man, that'd be great, especially yeah. There's a level to there's a level to podcasting that people like. People will always mm-hmm. will throw in a podcast. Some people get to do it while, while they work, but podcasting is also it's that local radio that you used to have mm-hmm. back in the day that everybody tuned into. You knew what was going on around you, and now people are seeing the benefit of podcasting. Everybody wants to be on a podcast because. They know it's going to get them seen a lot more than trying yep. to go through a mainstream <clears throat> channel. Exactly. And you get more screen time, too, because having a long format podcast like this, it gives us time for the fans to be able to see what you do, mm-hmm. why you do it, and they see the passion. And that allows them to say, you know what? <clears throat> got a wedding. I got a wrestling event. I want to hire this guy. You know, yes. I, I'm, I have a Comic Con. I, I want this guy to come and capture all these photos this, of these amazing moments because that is what a good photographer d- does. Yeah. F- photography often, it's said that a picture speaks a thousand words. Mm-hmm. I'd like yes. to think that it's actually probably more than that, especially with how viral the internet is because one good image could be solidified in the lexicon forever. You know, just like your favorite meme. Yes. Somebody took a picture. <clears throat> it turned into something. You know, there's an evolution to things in the digital age. It's not as it's not linear, and it's not like a, a slice of pie. Yeah. It's like an infinitesimal quantum pie. I like to think with the photos I take for wrestling shows, there's certain photos I post, and there's a story behind that photo. You can see um, a picture of, like, say, Tony Landa versus Devontae's, and Tony's putting him in a uh, sleeper hold. Mm-hmm. You know, the story behind it is the arrogant, evil villain is trying to wear down the big superhero type deals. So that's yeah. kind of stuff. What I like is, you know, telling that story behind the camera. Mm-hmm. And that's the big thing about wrestling is the story. And the characters, and yes, that's what's important about your photography, with especially with these wrestling events, because there's a, the story behind the wrestlers and the, intera- the interactions with them. It's mm-hmm. what makes a good wrestling show, and the wrestlers themselves put their all into these characters. So, with yes. your photography, I see what you're saying because it's it's selling that moment and their characters, and showing. Their passion, because especially mm-hmm. when you talk about, you know, Devante's and, and uh, Tita La Crema, they're, when you see them working, like, I try not to bug the wrestlers before the show. Like, Tony, he'll always, as soon as we see each other, he'll beeline it for me just to say hi. But I try <laughs> not to, I, I don't want to get in his way because I see him planning. And then when I'm ringside, I'm like, ah, that's what he was doing when I so that's, went up. That, you know? You're not the only one. He'll see me. He comes up to me. He'll be like, hey, what's up? We're like shaking him that on for one. I think I was talking to Chris or something, and he's walking by behind me, and all of a sudden he just goes, ah. Oh. I was like, hey, what's up? <laughs> but like when he's in the back or like he's in the rain talking to somebody, that's when I'm like, yo, just leave him alone. Let them do their thing. Yeah. They're t- going over their matches when they're in the back, and you see them with their heads down, like going like this, like, mm-hmm. man. It's like they're focusing. They're getting in the zone. I'm, um, yeah. Just yeah. like, just like, if anybody sees me at ringside, I'm always like a couple minutes before the show. I would sit there at the ringside, put my head down, close my eyes, just clear my head. Mm-hmm. Um, I would be stretching, and there's some point where I'm down on one knee doing the same thing. I'm just, I have to get into my mindset when I'm working mm-hmm. around ringside because I can't be. So loose to the point where I was like, okay, if I mess up, something might happen. Mm-hmm. Or something might happen to me. I might get hurt. So Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just like we were talking before, you've really got to pay attention when you're at these wrestling events. Um, you know, but it, it's 
the crowd, especially um, the uh, <laughs> uh, the the cage match when okay. yeah uh, it was I think uh, super crazy. It was the last match when he um, I f- I'm forgetting the wrestler's name um, when he beat Tony. Um, uh, Fozzie. Fozzie. When yes. he won the pop from that crowd, mm. it gave me goosebumps. Everybody standing up, cheering. It felt like yes. it felt like WrestleMania in that room. I know it was right before WrestleMania, but that match, you could feel the electricity as that moment happened. And that was one of the the my my happiest moments in you know recording wrestling so far was that last match in the cage the pop that happened it was you could feel the wave yes uh, not even that remember march to madness we had mm-hmm. tony lando versus alan Al- alvarez yes oh. um those two were going at it but you can feel like the po- if you're ever at ringside and you're hearing the fans it's like you're hairs are standing up oh yeah yeah feel the goosebumps it's like holy sh- this is what they're trying to do is get that pop it's getting the fans into it and i love that's what i love about wrestling so much it's, is those fans it, get into it so oh, much it's so magical it's yes literally there it's like they're creating magic with this moment because everybody's mm-hmm. on board once you walk through the door you want to see the heel you want to see the face you want to see this story play out and when it's happening and that story is just you know, it's like a wave. Yes. You know, you're riding that wave, and you know, oh, my God, this is so good. So I have to tell you a story here. Um, I did CCW's Don't Blink. It was their first show at the power plant down in Baltimore, uh, Maryland, at Power Plant Live. Um, and where it is, it's like this big, giant canopy um, stage area, and they have these bars and nightclubs on the side of it and everything. They put them in the center. Now, it's pretty cold outside. Um, but the first match was post match versus the rep. And if you know those guys, they're really good guys. And the crowd just started to be- get bigger and bigger and bigger. People were coming out of the bars and the clubs. I see kids lining up. They have a uh, out like this balcony area where people were just lining up watching the show. And these two tag teams were going at it, going at it, and the fans were just getting into it. And it's so good as a photographer because we can capture those moments of like those fans going crazy and just getting on film for them. Yeah. And I remember I was catching some of those shots and I looked at um, a post on Instagram from Power Plant Live for the next CZW shows. And there's one, there's two of my photos just sitting there chilling with the fans just getting into it. So it's definitely like the fans are a key to the whole business. Oh, absolutely. You know, just like any business, really. But the fans yeah. are, they're a special type of nerd. You know, they have a, a certain passion. You know, they won't put up with bullshit. They can yeah. tell when you're real about it. And the love they give, like I have been saying, is just like the indie market in comic-wise. Because the love you get when, you know, you're, they see you putting out your all. You know, it's that kind of real recognizes real, but everybody's building each other up because we all realize a rising tide brings all ships. It's not I mean that. They could tell you, like, if the match is good or not. And if they're quiet, that means, oh, shit, the match is not good. <laughs> if they're getting into it, the match is good. But if they're sitting there saying, oh, shit, you, like, you effed up, you effed up, the, they know that when you. The backseat boys. Yes. Dude, that last match. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> When they ran out, I was like, I, I instinctively, I was like, I, I gotta go. Yeah, we gotta go. <laughs> <laughs> it was so, but it's so much. It, they're, they, they are the perfect heel because it's, they play into their name, but their moves with the little flair, like they're the, mm-hmm. that Backstreet Boy flair. It's so, it's so expertly done. It's really good that the intricacy that, goes into even their moves like yeah. the backseat boys their persona it's that is what makes 
the shows is when they have it work out like that. And, you know, it's not overnight that this happens, but it's why oh, these guys dude. get to travel around and make a name uh, for themselves. I remember the – so I let's go in the Backseat Boys. I remember them when they were called the Amazing Graysons when they, that was their first name when it came out. Huh? Shit. 2016. It was like 2016. It was at a pro wrestling magic show up in Richfield Park, New Jersey. Same show that I'm going to tell you this. Keith Lee versus Cody Rhodes' main event. This is right after Cody Rhodes left WWE. He's the American Nightmare. Um, the Graysons are in a tag team match with, I think, Private Party. And they're just, they were ama- like, they were, actually were. They're amazing. They were just good athletes and all that. Um, fast forward to a couple. About a year ago, I met met up with them back in wrestling is now tag team tournament. I'm like, wait a second, you guys used to be the amazing Graysons. They're like, yeah. I'm like, holy f and fuck, dude, you guys are like different now. <laughs> like, you guys are built more because they were like little skinny guys. Now yeah. they're just like, who? Um, and watching them at the tag team tournament, I was like, holy shit, they've gotten better and better, and now. Um, they're doing uh, superpowers of wrestling. They're not actually now faces over there. It's just so good to see them transition from a heel to a face as well. And it's just they're just a great tag team. Yeah. I just can't believe they're not signed by anybody yeah. yet. Dude, when I saw them, it, it was yeah last night. Last night, yeah, yeah, last night. <laughs> it's been, the past uh, week and a half has been a <laughs> wild for me, but yeah, but last night, nope, dude, actually two nights, two nights ago, uh, yeah, 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 Friday, yeah, yeah, yeah. Friday, Friday, but Friday night, man, that that last match, it the passion really, it it came out at super crazy, and you know, it's as from my side, it's probably the same as you, but you want to highlight the best part of these guys when they're doing these matches because you. Like we've been saying, you can tell that passion. And it's nice to get, you know, the the recognition from them. Like, man, I yeah. love that match. I, and I try to tell them after every match, like, hey, man, I think I've really got some really good shots of you. I, I, because you can tell when you're in the trenches there. Yeah. Like, dude, I don't know what you're going through. Have, because they probably have like, oh, my God, I didn't do this. I forgot that. Hey, man. I think I got some really good shots for you. I want to give them that because you, especially as a creative, you can get inside your yeah. head a lot. So being having that positive like affirmation of "dude, you did great," I think. Yeah, I'd like to think helps. I usually go in the back and you know they'll come. I'll see them. I'll see them or anybody else to like, hey. I say good match. They're like, how's the match? I was like, I'll tell them straight out. I'm like, listen, this is what was good. This was bad. And they'll be like, okay, okay, let's go, let's go. That's that's more impressive than me because I I'm yeah I'm fresh in this industry. So I, I I mean all matches are great for me. You know, I have to look at it from a different perspective. So I mm-hmm. can't really be a fan, but I also can't be a person who's in the business. I have to look at from both sides. I have to see like, okay. Did you do it correctly? Did you do it, you know, did yeah. it look good when you did it? You know, some guys do these suplexes and it doesn't look too good. And I'm like, eh. yeah, like, yo, yeah, it's like, you guys got to do it. It doesn't, it didn't look right. And they were like, oh, it did. I'm like, no, nah, it didn't look right. Trust me, dude. The, the t- uh, I swear it's just a suplex with Tony. Yeah. <laughs> that's one of that. That's what you know. That, <laughs> all right. I see what you're doing. It's a family event. Everybody sees that, but it's almost yes. like that that uh, kids show cartoon humor, where like, look, this is for the this is for the adults. The kids just yes. think it's funny, but the adults are like, all right, I see you. Thank you. That was for me. Oh well, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> There's that level of like a whole family experience that mm-hmm. you know it. After COVID, I imagine it it was probably very refreshing for everyone in the industry to f- get back to these live events. Yes. Like it, it was, how was that? Like in that beginning phase of this, because I'm sure there were a lot of precautions that, that w- they had to implement. So I wasn't really active during the COVID because my day job, I was super busy. So I would be watching a lot of stuff, like just following people on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, to see how everything going 
when COVID happened, like everybody had to shut down completely because it's like, how do we run a show without fans? Because that's yeah. where, you know, where we have to. There were some places that were doing like online shows where it was just you guys here wrestling in an empty ring, an empty area. Mm. When they started lifting restrictions up, you can see from a lot of shows, they're like, okay, let's do this, but let's just follow procedures. I remember quite a few companies had to, you know, cancel shows because they got, they weren't following COVID restrictions. Mm. So it was like, yeah, just everybody was doing it slowly. I remember a few shows when I started going, you know, people were wearing masks. So I was wearing a mask too. And it was just a difference between before and now COVID, pre-COVID, after COVID. And now since we're two years, a couple years after COVID, it's going back to normal where you see the fans just enjoying themselves coming out to shows and stuff like that. Yeah. And that's where I'm, I'm, I'm glad I got into it now because I, I was just thinking like, God, that, that must have been so hard on their end because a lot of people, when you have a passion project, you do have a day job and you are burning a candle at both ends. So mm-hmm. especially having that as a, a hindrance to what you're doing it i wanted to highlight that as well because it's it's something that was out of our control but now that we're back into it people who may have been reticent to go out to a live show they're a lot more willing and able and that's also another thing because you've been so you've been so uh like a key part of so many different wrestling companies it's i wanted to get you on here because i knew you would list them out like you did um, they did, yeah. because they all deserve the time to be highlighted. Their passion deserves to be shown. And just like I, I said, I want this to be a hub for all indie creators. It goes out to wrestling as well. If there are any wrestlers yes. that want to be hunted. I mean, metaphorically, metaphorically, <laughs> I'm not trying to incite anything or inspire no, the no. son of Sam. It's a metaphorical name. But if you want my fans to hunt you, I want them to hunt you as well because a lot of people have a very high degree of passion for what they're doing as a creative. And the creative uh, you know, monikers expands out infinitesimally when you look at what people are doing. Down to – I just met somebody the other day. That their art is with metal and woodworking and creating different things. And you know, just like Delco Batman or the two, uh, two Poor Carvers that was at the Great Media yeah. Comic Con. Delco Batman has that artistic flair. And a lot of people, I've looked at his work. It is fantastic. You know, Brian's great. Love that guy. Um, but highlighting that passion is one of the main points of this show. Just like highlighting your passion and your passion yes. for wrestling. You are definitely a wrestling perjanger. And I haven't said this definition in way too long. But a perjanger is a person or group you love or infatuated with nerd and geek culture. And the beauty of that definition is you can, be a, you can be a nerd or a geek about anything. So at the end of the day, when people ask, what is a perjanger? The answer is 42. Whatever you want it to be. Yes. And I also found out, because I like to give this a whole structured look at people. We got to nerd out a bit at, on Friday night. And you are a classic Def- defined nerd you know um we got I mean, into x-men a little bit so i mean <laughs> <laughs> yeah you know the the subtleties there it's uh nerddom is big right now and it's uh it's really moving forward how do you feel if i were to, if we were betting men yes on the future marvel dc who do you have more faith in in going into this next phase for both their projects. <laughs> it's a big one. It's a big one. I can tell you right now. Oh, I know my I, answer. Listen, I am a big fan of DC and Marvel. Uh, one of my favorite DC characters is not Superman. It's not Batman. It's not the typical ones. It's Green Lantern and Hal Jordan. Cause yeah, same. I love Green Lantern. <laughs> Because Hal Jordan's an Air Force pilot, he, he's a smart ass, and when you have that written on him, he's just like, man, I can just do whatever the fuck I want. Bam, yeah. take that out. Um, 
in all honesty, how I'm seeing how the pictures, how the cinematography, how everything is coming to to fruition right now, I'm seeing Marvel still riding that top above DC. Okay. Just because with Disney at the helm, they're pulling in more of the different um, universes of mm-hmm. the Marvel Universe. They're pulling in different stories of everybody. Like, look at Spider-Man. They had three different Spider-Man. Yeah, yeah almost yeah. three different Spider-Mans on one movie. And then you have Miles Morales, who's a different Spider-Man. Um, you have two different Captain Americas telling the story. It's just, I think Marvel right now is really going to be going up the top as well, too. And I feel like with Disney Plus being open to everybody now, with open to what the fans want, um, just by like, okay, X-Men 97. I can't go spoilers, mm. but Gambit. Ooh. Like, oh, oh my God. Gambit. I know, right? Uh, Gambit. Is, uh. It's such a brilliant show. Because yes. they continue to do what they did in the original series is pull from the comics. And they do it so expertly. It's, it's, they thread the needle, you know? They yes. really do. And that's where, yeah, I do see a lot of hope for Marvel. This is also where I got to play a little bit of devil's advocate. Because I trust in the gun. James Gunn, not Kevin Gunn. Um, Double shot Tuesday. <laughs> 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 so James Gunn, I think he really he's shown what he can do with Peacemaker. Yeah. And yeah, yeah. Especially with you know, Peacemaker, Suicide Squad, they were brilliant. And with what he was allowed to have, I think it was it was great. But DC's mm-hmm. major problem is that they got in their own way. Yeah, that's where I really have a lot of faith with uh, James Gunn and Peter Safran with their direction, just with their casting choices. Superman Legacy, I am, I am stoked for that. Just like Batman: uh, Brave and the Bold, I'm, I'm, I really want to see where they're going with their projects. Yeah, they had their Lex Luthor, awesome casting, love it. Even just from, hey, we're on set, Lois, Midge. From the marvelous Miss Maisel, perfect Lois. Yes, their casting choices great. The suit for Superman, I like it. I like how you have you know Lex Luthor. You're playing into it. You're not showing me his. Just don't show me his goddamn dad die again. You know Mm -hmm. they're focusing in on what the fans want. Now I'm not saying Marvel isn't doing that, but they had a couple lame ducks come out, especially like. The Marvels. Yes. I'm still searching for the reason that movie happened whatsoever. I'm sure I mean, like, they had a lot of good stuff they put in there, like with the yeah. uh, Beast at the end, you know, but it, there, what was the plot? Yeah, I mean, I totally agree. The plot was kind of like lackluster a little bit, but it was, it felt more of a comedy a little bit because there was did. a lot of other spots, you know, it was it was rough. It was rough. You know, I'm really yeah. I'm interested to see what they do because they have done amazing work, and you know, it, it, there have been a couple flops on their end recently. But Loki, what if, mm-hmm. uh, yes. you know, the stu- X Men, the stuff they're putting out, where they're listening to what the fans want. Yes, it's brilliant. So where I'm I'm I'm, I'm not saying it's going to be like a uh, you know a mile gap between the two, but I think it's going to be a closer race with DC. As long as they give me a goddamn Green Lantern. Give me a goddamn (laughs) Green Lantern show. You give me Nathan Philly and his guy. I like that casting. I think he could play a really, really great Guy Gardner. So they're already giving me a Green Lantern. I'm going to, I'm going to give suspend my disbelief for DC. I'm going to have a little hope. Because you're giving me a Green Lantern in the first project you're fucking putting out, all right? I no, no, I think they need to change that up. I think they need to give Nathan Fillion Hal Jordan because he was the voice of yes Hal Jordan for a lot, a lot of the anime stuff. Yeah, so I can see him being Hal Jordan because he has that 
rugged face, the, the look mm-hmm. that Haldron had. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. I really want them to start getting into the Jon Stewart. Yeah. Uh, Hal Jordan as well, too. Man, he's probably my favorite. Next to Hal. Um, but Jon Stewart was he's he's an awesome character. Yes. Just even from his you know, his backstory in the military, you know, obviously mm-hmm. he'd be a perfect choice for the Lantern Corps. If you're looking at Fearless, Air Force, Marines, you know, that makes yes. sense. Um I mean, he was even part, he was like almost second in command at the Justice League. If you ever watched the Justice League Unlimited yeah. series. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was I'm, just like, yo, I'll take control of this. Let's go. Yeah. Drop him a hat and then has a little relationship with Hawkgirl, you know? Yeah. Who? I mean, who didn't? Well, yeah. You know. <laughs> but <clears throat> it's it's hopeful, I think, for yes. the the market as to where if DC, the company itself, gets out of its own way. I think they can actually be a contender. You could have been a contender. You know, it's... But right now, Marvel is taking control of it, especially with Disney backing them up. And just having so much success with... Even post-Avengers, they've had a, quite yeah. a few success movies. Oh, WandaVision? Yeah, so. Amazing show. Love that. I mean, I mean Stan Lee and the Ten Rings, you know? Absolutely. Um that had a plot, albeit yes, there were some points to where you're like, "Why'd you do that?" It doesn't matter, you yeah. know. But lean into Shang Chi, lean into you know Doctor Strange, you know Benedict, yes. Benedict Cumberpatch is a, a brilliant Doctor Strange. Mm-hmm. So you know, I mean, especially with you know they're leaning into characters and the reshoots for the next Captain America uh, was a Brave New World yes. reshoots Blade. Mahershal yeah. Ali almost walked out until they said, "No, no, no, no! We'll re, we'll rewrite it. We'll rewrite it." You better if that guy's leaving. Mm-hmm. Listen, if it, I would, I would appreciate it if they, when they do the blade, that they bring in Wesley Snipes as a cameo for something. Because man, he was the original blade. Oh my god, was, he just shows up for there was like talks one line of him being a character in that movie. I can't remember. Been so long. I can't remember who it was supposed to be, who he was supposed to be, but I like I like that, especially with the multiverse. Just bring him back as Blade. You can have two blades. Multiverse. Yeah. Why fucking not? There was that whole little kerfuffle with Jonathan Majors, which kind of you know messed with their plans. But spousal mm. abuse will do that to you. Yeah. Could have asked Chris Brown or uh, oh, who was that guy from the Ravens? I have no clue. He beat his wife in the in the elevator. God. What'd she say? What'd she say? <laughs> Spousal abuse is no is a big problem. Um, yeah, but what'd she say? Don't doesn't mean you can beat her. What'd she no. say? <laughs> anyway. Anyway. So, so <clears throat> plot holes aside, um, where can everybody go to hire you for the next event? All right. So just so everybody know, I'm not just a wrestling photographer. I'm also I love to do car photography, mm. um, modeling photography. I'm always looking for some new models to post on my site and as well as some cars. Um, I do events like I've been doing the Comic Cons. I did Dover Comic Con and I just did Media Comic Con. Um, so I'm looking at doing other events. Weddings right now. I'm not a little on my scope a little bit, but hopefully yeah. I'll get into that and get some good chunk of change out of that but if you want to look for me you can look for me on facebook at brian schweiker um facebook page b schweik b schweik studios our studio that's where i answer all the anybody who's not a who's a customer or client um my brian brian schweiker is just for me and the wrestlers to talk to you so if you're trying to add me there i'm just going to tell you just go to my page Mm -hmm. um Twitter, you can find me at B underscore S-C-H-W-E-I-K. Instagram, you can find me at B Schweiker. That's S-C-H-W-E-I-K-E-R 13. Um, and it's the same handle for threads and TikTok. Excellent. And if you want to go to my site, my site is 
www.bschweikstudio.smugmug.com. Excellent. Make sure you send me all those links, and I'll have them in the description for, of the podcast below. Um, but I will. Your passion shows. The wrestlers love what you do for them. I appreciate you in the trenches next to me because I know we're Thank both you. capturing the best of the event that's really going to highlight everybody. And we're going to continue to work together, buddy. Um, anytime as you want to well. be on, just let me know. I'd love to have Probably. you back. And, uh, you know, it's a, it's an ever-growing thing being in the indie market that I want people to be able to come here and highlight. And I know if you know anybody that wants to be hunted, you'll send them my way. Yep. Um, just like if I know anybody that needs you for an event, I'll definitely let them know where to find Thank you. Them. So I try to end off this podcast the same goddamn way every time. And that's because we love you. We miss you. And we'll see you next time. Until then, game on, boys and girls. Bye-bye. Play on my tanger. God, it's been too long since I fucking signed off. Ugh, it's like <laughs> taking a good shit. I just <laughs> I just edited the podcast I did a while back with uh, Leah Savoli and Frank mm-hmm. adequately put it to where when you're coming in on uh, Discord, when the person pops in from those dots, it's almost like a transporter from Star Trek to where you just materialize out of nowhere. As always, man. Man, next month I literally have what? One, two, three, four, five. Five wrestling shows and two, possibly three photo shoots. So. <laughs> yeah. So I'm busy, I'm over. <sighs> Much to your the continued photo success. Shoots, photo shoots, I'm getting paid. So I'm like, ah, oh, some chunk of change there. There you go. Hey, that's that's um, what the goal is, man. I hope we get yes, you some, uh, some more business off of this podcast. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. <laughs>